I mean, I also feel like, Joe, that people are so quick to try and dismiss what's happening with the Delta variant. They, they look at the U.K. and say, see, it's going to peak here quick and then start going down just like it did there. It may peak. It may have peaked already in the south. But even Dr. Gottlieb, who everybody cites always and for good reason, because he's been right the whole way, suggests <coughs> we we don't know what's going to happen with the Delta variant in the Northeast because it hasn't really come here in great numbers yet. We don't know what's going to happen in the Midwest, the Pacific Northwest. Everybody just assumes, well, it's peaking in the south, so that means it's just peaking everywhere, and then it's going to peter out, and everything's going to be all awesome. Uh, we just don't know. And that's a big issue for the market when it comes to the trajectory of the economy in the next, let's say, three months. That's, that's very accurate, and I think that also describes an environment where consumer behavior might begin to moderate or change. Let's understand that this has been a consumer-driven economic recovery. We've been waiting for there to be a handoff to the industrial sector. We have not witnessed that so far. Uh, we need the consumer to stay resilient. We need the consumer not to embrace frugality. There's no sign that they're doing that. But an environment, as you're describing, I think behavior would tend to move Well, I mean, towards, there's a little sign they're doing uh, that. There's a little sign we're doing that. Sure. What do you mean? I mean, consumer confidence was pathetic. And the retail sales number today was a miss. Now, they're one number, okay? You're not, I'm not going to say, well, that's changed the whole story before Josh starts screaming at me that it's just one number. But... What are you they're, comps, Judge? They're important numbers. Judge, Judge, I'm not screaming at you, but you're, <laughs> there he goes. you're comparing. Not yet. That's why I had the I'm disclaimer. I'm not screaming at you. <laughs> I love you. Scott, I love you. I'm not screaming at you. But your, your comps are all-time record highs in these measures. They're not real. They're not. They're not the, the, you're not comping against averages for things like consumer confidence. You're looking at literally the comp versus a euphoric moment when we thought, like, the worst of COVID is behind us and fresh off that second round of stimulus checks hitting people's bank accounts. Those are tough comps. There's a very legitimate argument to be made that things were as good as they get in things like retail uh, versus the March quarter when we had that second round of checks uh, and, and, and everybody got flushed with cash all at once. So maybe we pulled forward some retail activity into Q2, uh, and now Q3 won't look so hot, or into Q1, and Q2 wasn't as explosive a comp. That's very fair. We're also comping against last year as things started to improve. Like, I'm not saying people it was good, but people were doing more in August of last year than in April. And so we're comping against big growth numbers in a lot of metrics. So I just feel like being able to think in larger increments than how are things today versus yesterday becomes very important at this part of the cycle. Hey,